The British cycling team has been one of the UK's sporting success stories in recent years. Today I'm with David Denier, Professor of Organisational Change here at Cranfield, to talk about the role leadership has played in the transformation of the Sky cycling team. David, can you tell me a little bit about the nature of the success of the team? Yes, I've been following this story for a long time. It's such an interesting story. Um, if you go back to the mid-1990s and look where British cycling's come from, um, they were facing bankruptcy. They'd got one Olympic um, velodrome in the UK, Olympic Standard Velodrome, which was facing closure. They won two bronze medals at Atlanta. And you roll that forward to the Olum London Olympics, eight gold medals, Follow, following up Bradley Wiggins, first UK person to win uh, the, the Tour de France, and followed the following year by Chris Froome repeating that success. So not only did UK cycling have success in the velodrome, but the cycling team took that into Team Sky and followed it up. Now, Sir Dave Brailsford is often credited with being the architect of this transformation. However, I think what's interesting is he himself doesn't like to refer to himself as the leader. Could you speak a little bit more about that? When you listen to him in interviews, and there's lots of them on, uh, on the internet that you can look at, he always refers to himself as the orchestra conductor. And his view is that he's put together a very good orchestra. And he says that I n he never coaches the riders directly, he coaches the coaches who coach the riders. And I think one of the, the key elements that he brought into British cycling was what he terms taking the, the crowns off the heads of the management and putting it onto the heads of the riders. Mm. It's really interesting because I think one of the things you're pointing to here is that leadership in the way that he's seeing it is a much more shared and distributed phenomenon, but somehow he still has a role in making that happen. Could you speak per perhaps a bit more about some of the principles that of his leadership style in making that happen? Well, I think there's two things. I think there is the issue of his leadership style and how he role models the behaviours that he wants to see in others. What I also think he's done is created a fantastic system that's a high performing system. And the way that he's done that is to have absolute clarity about the goals that they are all trying to achieve. They set up what they called the podium program, which meant that they were aiming for medals and nothing less. Mm. He talks about prioritisation and deciding what you want to win because you can't win everything. I think there's some key lessons there for, for leaders in any organisation. But once you've identified what you want to win, he then plans backwards. We often mm. plan forwards in organisations, but he plans back from that mm. goal and says, what will it take to win? Mm. What will it take of the individuals, the individual riders, to get to that point in time where they can win? There's a great focus on process goals, not the outcome. Mm. So it's delivering the times that they are required to do mm. to win the gold medals. I can imagine many business leaders listening to what you're saying and saying, well, that's fine for cycling. The goals are very clear. You either win the race or you don't. How could a business leader apply some of these ideas to the more ambiguous context in which they are working? Well, I think in a lot of organisations, we actually create uh, quite a muddy picture of mm -hmm. the goals and priorities that we've got. I think in all organisations, we can be much clearer about the strategy, what it is we're trying to achieve, to get buy into that, to be absolutely sure about the roles and responsibilities that individuals play in reaching those goals. And unless people have a shared set of goals that they can identify with, and they're getting constant feedback mm -hmm. that they're moving towards those goals or moving away from those goals, then they're not going to achieve them. Mm -hmm. So I think we can all learn something from really discussing the goals amongst the stakeholders involved and really ensuring that there is some clarity. One last question about the context within which cycling operates. It's a context within which there's been quite a lot of discussion about different aspects of ethics, particularly around drug taking for increased performance. Um, what kind of messages does Sir Dave Brailsford give out to do with ethics and principles and, and how does he handle the kind of pressures in operating in that kind of context. Yeah. You can see when you look at the interviews with him by being hounded by the press that the, the, this is sort of a weight on his shoulders, a cloud hanging over the, the whole team. Because as soon as you get an exceptional performance, mm -hmm. s a reporter will always ask the question, well, was he on drugs? Mm -hmm. And he's constantly defending that. So I think there's a, a strong element of mental toughness at the individual level 
that's exhibited by Sir Dave Brailsford. Um, I think the other thing is that he's got a very strong zero tolerance policy, mm. which is rig rigorously enforced. And if you look back, four members, senior members of his management team were implicated in the drug scandal previous to their involvement with Team Sky, and they're no longer with the team. Mm. He often has been heard saying that he'd rather compromise performance rather than his principles. And I think there's some real lessons for leadership here about sticking to your principles. That sounds like a really good point to end on. Thanks so much, David. Thank you, Donna.